I'm going to show you guys how to lay out a pattern to make a truncated uh, transition piece. This could be in a round sheet metal pattern. In other words, something similar to this pattern, except the angle is going to be on the top on this one. So the uh, first thing I've done is just drawn a side view of the piece I want to do. Again, the bottom is round, the top is round, except the top has an angled piece on it. So first thing I'm going to do is extend these lines up the side until they meet up here somewhere. That's going to be my center. I have my center down here. In this case, this is six inches. Again, if you can see this, see what I'm doing here. This paper I'm drawing on has fade out lines, very light blue lines here. Okay, that helps me um, just keep everything square, perpendicular without having to use something like this where I'm constantly sliding this around. So, very handy for using that. So, first thing I'm going to do is uh, take my trusty compass. Draw a line around here like so. And now I'm going to divide this up. Again, I'm taking this radius, half of this circle here. I'm going to dial it in here. Now I can divide this circle. And again, this circle would represent half the bottom of this cone. So I'm going to divide that into equal segments here. Okay. From here, I'm going to use my trusty pencil. Come straight up the run here. I'm also going to give these points all names. Here's a number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, from here, <clears throat> I'm going to take each one of these points all the way up to this point here. Cut my center line all the way up. I'm going to transfer these lines, these numbers up here. So my one point will be here, my two will be up here, my three here, four, five, six, and seven. All right. So I'm going to take a arc from here, run it up here, and an arc from way down here. And arc from here. Okay. Now, each one of these segments is the same length in theory. I'm going to, I always like to double check it, make sure that they're saying that looks good. Uh, that one's a little off. Let's check a couple more. That's a little long. Okay, I like that. So, I'm going to start with the point here. We'll call this point one. So, we're going to have, we're going to make enough segments to do a complete round pattern. There's point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, that represents half that whole radius. So seven. 
six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, I'm hoping all this gets in the video. So anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven again. That represents half of this bottom. Now I'm going to go around the horn just like I was six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to draw some lines here. My first line. Second. Every one of these lines represents one of these lines here. Again, I know you can get you can get programs that will do patterns for you, and I'm all for that. I use AutoCAD a lot when I'm designing anything from a home to a, you know a part that we're going to fabricate in the shop. But knowing how to do this by hand, uh, or just having the head knowledge how these patterns are constructed is a great uh, advantage to any time you're working on any kind of design, whether it be on paper or on a uh, computer screen. Just like um, I came up through the trades as a carpenter, and I ended up probably by the time my career was done as a carpenter, built a hundred homes from the ground up. And that was a great advantage to transitioning into building to designing buildings. Uh, luckily I got to design about half the houses that I built. Uh, so it was really fun. Okay, so anyway we've got all these things here. We're going to lay them out. Now taking each length here There's my number one length, so all on my number ones. There's a length one up here on the one. Now my two, my number two length. Three length. Can I use this when as a young man I <clears throat> built custom exhaust systems for motorcycles and uh, this is the way I lay out each section of that pipe. And I had to make a transition from narrow to the wider openings, uh, kind of wrap the wrap the pipe around through the frame, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that one should be the same length as that. See that there? Good. Okay, let's put let's connect some lines here. And lastly, I'm going to add a tab out here to connect things with. I'll just be freehanded out there. Okay, let's cut this bad boy out. Again, if you were doing this in a shop, you'd take this piece of paper. You don't even necessarily have to cut it out. You could lay it on a piece of metal and then using a punch, you could punch each one of these holes and then cut the, the pattern out in metal or on a heavy paper. 
So a lot of shops will actually, if they know they're going to be using a, uh, a template quite a lot, they'll make it out of metal, they will label it as whatever it is, they'll hang it on the wall, and every time they need it, you go pull it off the wall, lay it on your piece of metal, and uh, take it from there. So, again, heavy paper is, is you know, nice to have instead of this graph paper. Graph paper is fantastic for laying things out on, but keeping it around forever, it's, it's not very durable. Not like a heavy piece of uh, waxed paper is or ac an actual sheet metal pattern that you can use again and again and again. Okay. Again, remember this tab area right over here is just meant for helping me have some spot to um assemble this little pattern here just gonna again just lay this out real quickly for you for all the viewers out there and here we are here we are cone flat bottom with actually angled head and again you can use this template to do um, pretty much any size of cone regardless of the angle on the top whether it's a uh, you know 10 to 30 40 50 60 70 degrees thanks for watching